Hey, what's up guys? Little Karibo here, coming at you live from Academy Island. Not actually live, because I don't have very good Wi-Fi signal here. And the only halfway good Wi-Fi they have, the password is Jaden is a great duelist. And I'm not personally inclined to write those words, even ironically. So I've got no cause to use it, really. You may notice a few things are different. And I know there's a prevailing opinion on the internet that different equals bad. Or just slightly worse enough that we should raise a big stinking stink about about it. But please, before you make your stink, let me explain what's going on. First of all, obviously the hair's gone again. I know what you're thinking. He somehow magically lost all of his beautiful natural hair overnight, which seems highly improbable. And it actually is very improbable, because it's not what happened. See, I thought that was my hair, but it turns out it was just some of Jaden's hair that they're storing here at the academy in honor of him. Personally, if I wanted anything displayed at the school where I I attended, it would not be my hair. Certainly not the hair on my head. Although I guess the other options aren't great either. Point is, they confiscated my wig and put it back on display. Which seems rude. So yeah, just no hair now. Second, you've probably noticed by now that the audio quality is significantly different. And hopefully not in a bad way. See, I ended up looting some of the school equipment that they use for lectures and I found one of these uh, lapel mic thingies that I thought would come in handy when addressing the camera. See, before I was just putting a studio microphone just out of shot right next to me and I was sort of talking into it. But now I can do things like move around and hopefully it won't affect the audio. So yeah, if you notice a difference in sound quality, please focus on the fact that you can hear what I'm saying and not whether it sounds like I'm whispering it lovingly into your ear. I guess I could do the entire GX review series directly into your ear lovingly in the dead of night, but that would cost you a lot of money. So yeah, a couple of minor, hopefully completely superfluous changes, which means that my subscribers have likely started burning the channel to the ground as we speak. But on the off chance that you haven't turned against me completely, here's the new episode of Lil Kariba Watches GX. Episode 9 thereof. And if you've not been watching, this is a series where I watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime spin-off Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which takes place entirely within the realm of Jade and Yuki's ego. And a school. A school for card games. Hogwarts it is not. Mostly because the kids tend to survive and are not forcibly shipped at the end of the series. I'm coming after you, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> oh yeah. What am I doing? Uh, and if you're thinking to yourself, well, little Karibo, I'd love to watch this series with you as you're doing it, you can! There are several legal ways to watch the series. You can check it out on Amazon Prime, you can check it out on Hulu.com, you can check it out on Crunchyroll, there's DVDs. There's so many ways to support a almost decade-old spin-off of Yu-Gi-Oh! And why wouldn't you want to do that? In this episode, I'll be taking a look at Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Episode 9, entitled Family Business. And it can't be referring to Jaden's family business, so this can't be a Jaden episode, because from what I can tell, he has no family. I'm pretty sure he's the result of a Karibo and a human being having their genes spliced. He's like Channing Tatum from Jupiter Ascending. He's a space where Karibo. Don't be surprised if during a full moon, on Academy Island, you'd hear Doodala! being howled. And the episode starts off in the middle of the ocean, and there's a little rowboat sort of charting its way through the depths. And I'm not shitting you here, I'm pretty sure that that's the fucking rower rowing the boat. Oh my god! I fucking love the rower! Chilling out with the rower in the schoolyard, finding oars, never rowing too hard. Yeah, just the fucking rower, he's there apparently. GX is now an even greater show than the Duel Monsters anime because of the King rower. And the rower is transporting a very stern looking man across the ocean who orders the rower. You should never order the rower around. He tells the rower that they got to get to Academy Island by daybreak. Well, if you need to be there that quick, why are you in a shitty little rowboat, mate? I know the opportunity to be in a boat with the rower is one you don't pass up, but what the f you doing? Has boating technology taken many steps back as a result of this world's focus on card game technology? Technology. I don't know what to believe. Anyway, this buff monstrosity of a passenger thinks to himself that he's not gonna let Chumley waste another slacking day at that duel academy. Oh, it's Chumley's dad. What happened? Chumley's dad is putting me to shame with his massive amounts of body hair. 
and his masculinity. His arm hairs alone could bench press 500 pounds. What a manly man. And he's coming to Duel Academy, I guess. And then, of course, we get the beautiful sound of Tchaikovsky's Yu-Gi-Oh! opening theme in GX minor. And then after the opening theme, we see Jaden relaxing under the shade of a tree. Okay, penalty. Clearly not chilling out in the schoolyard. As the theme song has taught us, if you're going to chill out, it had better be within the confines of the schoolyard. Just not playing by the rules, is he? The rules of the theme music. And then Cyrus comes out of nowhere and disturbs Jaden's relaxation and tells him that Chumley's dad has arrived. And Jaden asks, oh, is he here to raid the fridge? He's fat! And he wants Chumley to leave Duel Academy, to which Jaden is clearly very upset and concerned. Drop out? No way, not our buddy. Oh no, not Chumley. He is the finest mind of our generation. Ah, I'm worried. Mildly concerned Jaden. If that were Yugi Moto, he would have shot somebody before allowing a friend to leave. <laughs> Jaden and Cyrus run over to the Slifer Red dorm where a huge crowd of Slifer Red students have gathered around Banner's room. Presumably so that they can get a whiff of just some of the manly musk that is emanating from Chumley's dad. I've just gotta smell it. Jaden and Cyrus sort of barge their way to the front of the group so they can look in Banner's dorm room. And they see Chumley's dad in there with Banner. And they can see just how massively masculine he is. He looks like the ultimate warrior and Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force had a baby. Cyrus comments that Chumley's dad looks like a bodybuilder. And Jaden says that carrying around Chumley as a kid, you'd kind of have to be. He's fat! And then we see inside Professor Banner's dorm where he and Chumley's dad are sat down at a little table having a snack. Chumley's dad is telling Professor Banner that it would be one thing if Chumley was good at dueling, but since he's not, he's wasting his time here and he should just come back home. Well, it's nice to know that every family member in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is about as supportive as a shitty piece of plywood. Chumley's dad says he wants Chumley to come home and join the family business. Hence the title. That's right. The hot sauce business. What is Chumley's dad, the CEO of Nando's? And Chumley's dad says to Banner, you do like hot sauce, don't you? And Banner nervously, because look at Chumley's dad, of course he's nervous, says, oh yes, I love it. So Chumley's dad just puts a huge bottle of hot sauce on the table between them. They've clearly done a very rushed job of editing it and just sort of pasted some clip art of chili peppers on the side of the bottle. It's kind of incredible. They may as well have just written, this is clearly hot sauce on the side of the bottle in Comic Sans. That's about how convincing it looks. I love going to pubs and drinking hot sauce fresh from the tap. It's much better to suggest that kids drink lots of hot sauce straight from the bottle than it is to suggest that alcohol exists. Kids can't know about booze. Professor Banner tries to insist that he couldn't take such a gift. And Chumley's dad says, no, please consider it a goodbye gift from me and Chumley, which is appropriate as attempting to consume any of the Chumley related humor in this English dub has caused me to have severe bowel problems. Jaden says to Cyrus, Chumley's not leaving if we can help it. Let's go talk some sense into him. You know, personally, I'm surprised that Chumley agreed to leave the island as well, as it requires him to get out of bed. Jaden and Cyrus return to their dorm room to see Chumley packing his things. And Jaden says it looks like Chumley's giving up. He's just taking everything that he's worked for and throwing it all away. <laughs> worked for. Jaden accusingly grabs Chumley by the shoulder and spins him round, only to reveal that tears are pouring down his face. And you may think that he's crying because of his emotional state, but it turns out that Chumley's just had to hold in his piss for so long due to not wanting to get out of bed that it started leaking out of his eye sockets. Chumley tries to deflect from his crying, saying that it's not like he's worth wasting their time on. At least according to his dad, he's not. And then Chumley says that he could be a great duelist, because because his dad doesn't know that he has a secret power. Silent and constant flatulence? The ability to store entire boxes of donuts under his man boobs? Technically dying for large portions of the day? No, it turns out Chumley's power is the ability to hear duel monsters. I don't remember him demonstrating that power or how that power would help him play a card game. If anything, I'd be worse at card games if I could hear the duel monsters talk. Can you imagine trying to focus on your cards while your Celtic guard 
Guardian and your dark magician are having a chin wag. Be very distracting. Chumley says he hasn't told his dad about his power because his dad doesn't want to listen. He only wants to hear about hot sauce, hot sauce, hot sauce. You know, your dad might be a saucerholic, Chumley. It's a huge problem in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 4 Kids universe. Then we see Jaden in the Chancellor's office with Chumley, Cyrus, and Chumley's dad. Jaden insists that Chumley has a gift, and Chumley's dad says, yeah, a gift for eating grilled cheese. He's fat! I love that this is a story about Chumley's two best friends wanting to keep him in the school, but they're kind of somewhat reluctant about it. You can't leave, Chumley. Who else are we gonna make fat jokes incessantly about? That level of enthusiasm. Chancellor Valorum says he appreciates Jaden and Cyrus sticking up for Chumley, but it's a personal matter. Wow, really strictly laying down the law in this situation, but when it comes to a dangerous abandoned dorm where kids go missing, just, just leave it. You don't have to worry about fencing it off or putting any protection around, just leave it. Don't do anything. Chumley's dad proposes that they dictate the future of his son's education via a card game, saying that if Chumley has this special gift that they claim, he'll be able to win no problem. Why does knowing what dual monsters are saying make it easier to play card games? That If my trading cards were talking to me, I wouldn't be better at it. What's going on? It's not a secret power, it's an inconvenience. So if Chumley wins this duel, he gets to stay at Duel Academy. Yay! But if he loses, he has to go toil in the hot sauce mines. Boo! And then Chancellor Shepard has one of the oddest line reads in the series so far, making himself sound like a cross between Robin Williams and that guy from Futurama who goes, Welcome to the world of tomorrow! Tomorrow morning it will be decided. Will Chumley stay? Oh, oh. Jaden walks away from the academy laughing, saying it was a piece of cake to convince Chumley's dad to let him stay. It figures that Jaden would have already concluded that he won somehow. He's like, I pulled Monster Reborn in that debate. Cyrus sensibly says that they've only convinced him to give him a chance and that the duel isn't necessarily in the bag. And Jaden says, what are you talking about? Obviously Chumley's dad isn't good at card games, he's an amateur. And I'm like, Jaden, how do you exist? You just take a look at someone and think you know how good they are at card games. It's not like an MMO where you just right-click an enemy and you know how powerful they are. You've got to actually play a card game with them first. Professor Banner points out that Chumley's dad has been state dual champion three years in a row. And you'd think that Jaden Yuki, an expert at card games, would know that sort of knowledge and be aware of the things that are happening around him. But no, not remotely. Professor Banner explains that Chumley was sent to Duel Academy because Chumley's dad wanted him to be just like him. So wait, hot sauce is the family business, but also dueling is? What are you doing having multiple interests in a Yu-Gi-Oh show, Chumley's dad? Banner says that Chumley's dad has emulated his deck based on the kick that his hot sauce gives you. Yes, his cards will make you sh** lava. Isn't that a lovely image? I've sh** out a lava golem or two in my time. <laughs> And while Banner's explaining this, an image of Chumley's dad as a samurai is transposed on top of him. <laughs> and it's like, what? Seven samurai? More like a trip to Nando's. Jaden is surprised that Chumley accepted the duel, taking this into account. But Chumley has a very determined look on his face. Either that, or he's attempting to digest that entire cow's worth of steak that he ate for breakfast. Jaden is so excited that Chumley's gonna play his dad in a card game that he does this dance that I have dubbed the third wheel. Now come on, let's go get your deck ready, Chung. In order to do that dance, you've got to grab two people who really don't want to be involved in the dance and do it. We then cut to Professor Banner's dorm room where Chumley's dad and him are sat down and they're just downing hot sauce. There's a poorly photoshopped bottle of hot sauce on the table and they're just, just taking turns drinking from it. Jaden, whatever you do, don't take a shower in the outhouse tonight because they're going to be in there a while. But no, obviously in the Japanese they're just drinking sake and having sake casually together. Which has now become some sort of weird twisted hot sauce ritual that Yu-Gi-Oh characters apparently have. Not only that, but Pharaoh the cat is drinking hot sauce from his bowl. Meow! I'm practicing to be on hot ones. Because as you know, I am a hot one. Nya -nya -nya. Referring to this, Professor Banner says that it's a good thing he stocked up on kitty litter. Yeah, the cat! That's gonna take a sh**. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh humor, yo. Yes, I summon Wing Dragon of... 
Chumley's dad stands up and goes outside, presumably to have his first of many shits of the night. And we get a splendid shot of his ass as he leaves. Chumley's dad. I hate to see Chumley's dad go, but I love to watch Chumley's dad leave. And as Chumley's dad is going outside, he hears Jaden lecturing Chumley about the number of koalas in his deck. And Chumley argues that koalas are the best. Hard to argue. They're pretty f***ing cute. And Jaden makes this cognizant observation. Koalas are cool, but... Can you win with them? Yeah, Jaden, you're right. A certain type of monster definitely has no chance of winning. This from the guy who's got f***ing Wink Karibo in his deck. I bet if they were called Elemental Hero Koala Man, he'd be all over it. Cyrus offers Chumley one of his cards, saying that if he joins it with one of his koalas, he'll have a deck from down under. Okay, but regardless of where the deck's from, will it be good? Not really concerned about its point of origin. Jaden says that he also has a card for Chumley, and outside, Chumley's dad listens intently. It's easy for him to listen in because his massive arm hairs also act as antenna, which he can tune into very various audio frequencies to hear better. The next day, Chumley's dad and Chumley's dad's son, Chumley, are ready to play a card game. And Professor Banner and Pharaoh the Cat are acting as referee. Deduct a thousand life points from Chumley as he failed to cuddle me when he made his move. I should mention that both Chumley's dad and Chumley are not wearing shoes, so we get plenty of just gorgeous shots of their feet, if you're into that. And Chumley's dad's feet are disappointingly not covered in thick man hair. Professor Banner asks Chumley if he's prepared to go through with this, and if he's ready to accept a role in Chumley's dad's hot sauce company if he loses. And Chumley says, right now I'm ready for anything. Man, what a character arc Chumley's had. First three episodes just sort of stayed in bed. The next few episodes, he left his bed. And now he's willing to play a card game with his father. This series has done for Chumley in nine episodes, what even Game of Thrones couldn't do for Jon Snow in seven seasons. And I defy you to find an error in what I just said. Chumley and his dad have a dramatic stare down, which is then interrupted by a shot of Pharaoh the Cat meowing, which if you ask me would improve any dramatic stare down from any movie. Star Wars, the good, the bad, and the ugly, really any western. Chumley starts things off by drawing Desmond Koala, or Des Koala to his friends. But Chumley makes the mistake of playing Des Koala in attack mode. And then his dad lectures him, saying that he should have put it in face down defense mode and then flipped it. And then it turns out that Chumley didn't even realize that he could set the card in face down defense mode because Jaden is always summoning things in face up defense mode. So he didn't think it was possible. You see, Jaden? You and your shoddy duelsmanship. Can't stand it. Chumley's dad draws a card and then smiles to himself saying, pay attention children, you might just learn something. Yeah, about how to style your own body hair, probably. And Chumley's dad summons Dizzy Tiger in attack mode. I didn't know Kaiser Neko was in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And it's a tiger with a bottle of suck hot sauce. And Dizzy Tiger also has shades on, which I assume is because it has a hangover from all the hot sauce it's been drinking. Or is it just because he's a cool cat? Oh sh it's cool cat. Chumley's dad has summoned Cool Cat. He's here to save the kids, guys. Dizzy Tiger starts stumbling around like a drunk person. And I say like a drunk person because obviously he's not really drunk because you can't get drunk off hot sauce. <laughs> what kind of an idiot would think that? Dizzy Tiger attacks the koala who explodes. Desmond, no! And the phantom image of the tiger goes through Chumley, leaving a weird sort of pinkish red mist in its wake. And Chumley covers his nose and says, that's hot sauce, all right. Yeah, that infamous hot sauce smell. That's why the band Red Hot Chili Peppers named themselves that, because of their infamous body odor. That's why they would hang out under that bridge. And I don't ever want to smell like I did that day. Dizzy Tiger does a funky dance in front of Chumley's dad, who says that at this rate, they'll be back in time for dinner, which will be hot sauce. Is that the secret to having a manly physique? Just eat raw hot sauce because I'll try it. Within the space of 10 seconds, Jaden tells Chumley he should keep his cool, but also fight back. A lot of the things that Jaden says make my head spin 360 degrees, metaphorically. Chumley activates the spell card Koala March, which brings back his desk koala from the graveyard, and also brings a lot of attention to koala rights within society. Cyrus then leans over Jaden's shoulder and says, hey, look, Jaden, Chumley's got his desk koala back. And I'm like, this isn't a duel arena. 
You're just in a regular room. This is like being five feet away from somebody and being like, look at him, he's wearing a shirt. But Cyrus is just right there and he's like, look, there's Desk Koala, he did it. Do you think Yu-Gi-Oh characters just get used to having to announce what other people are doing all the time? Must make going to a public urinal very awkward. Look, he's shaking himself off right now, Jaden. chun is also able to special summon his other Desk Koala from his hand. And then he tributes both of them to summon Big Koala. Who is, is just a giant blue koala. It's brilliant. I wish that all the monsters were named thusly. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is just Big Blue Eyes White Dragon. Dark Magician of Chaos is just Big Magician. I'd like it a lot more. Big Koala just picks up Dizzy Tiger and chucks it to the ground and smashes it. Like he's Bloody Thor breaking a coffee mug. So Chumley's dad summons Dizzy Angel, which is just David Boreanaz on a Friday night. Dizzy Angel is carrying a bottle of hot sauce around with it and is breathing out hot sauce fumes. Chumley takes a look at Dizzy Angel and says, yeah, he reeks of hot sauce too, and from the looks of things, he's had his fair share of it. So apparently hot sauce in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe gets you wasted. I wonder what gets you high in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe? Tic Tacs? Chumley's dad activates the spell card hot sauce bottle. Is that a real spell? I want it. More than any other card that this series has showcased, I want that card. I'm gonna build an entire deck around Hot Sauce Bottle. And then Chumley's dad activates his other spell card, Flipping the Table, which summons an enormous wooden table that raises Chumley and the monsters on the field off the ground. Whoa, that doesn't make sense. I'm gonna call foul once again. They're just sort of standing in a room, and yet the dual discs were able to summon an actual wooden table with a physical presence. What? No, that doesn't work for me. It's one thing for the dual monsters attacks to have the visual effect of hurting people but to create a wooden table out of thin air that is some next level bullshit the bull has ascended an entire stage in order to shit off of it. Chumley's dad literally flips the table with his giant hairy man arms and it flips Chumley and his monsters into the air, destroying Big Koala in the process. Chumley's dad explains that it destroys every card on his side of the field and an equal number of monsters on Chumley's side of the field. Chumley says to his dad, that's just like you, you don't like something so you trash it. And it sounds like you've had a semi-abusive relationship with your dad, Chumley. And Chumley's dad says, I didn't become a hot sauce tycoon by being nice, son. Hot sauce tycoon. I f***ing love it. I love the concept of the hot sauce industry being full of backstabbers and corrupt officials that Chumley's dad has had to navigate. Dizzy Angel is still on the field to Chumley's confusion, and Chumley's dad explains that Dizzy Angel's special effect allows it to not be destroyed by flipping the table. And hot sauce bottle's effect activates when it's sent to the GY, causing 500 points of damage to Chumley. Weirdly, that is exactly what Sriracha Sauce says on the back of the ball. Dizzy Angel fires a beam of hot sauce energy at Chumley, dropping his life points to a thousand. You know, I laugh about it, but I also have shot many a beam of hot sauce energy out of my body at some point. Chumley says he can't win. No, Chumley, that's not how you do it. You've got to have unreasonable levels of confidence like Jaden if you expect to win. Chumley draws the card that Cyrus gave him earlier, which turns out to be a green kangaroo with boxing gloves on. Chumley activates the spell card Silent Doom, which is a spell card and not just another name for his flatulence, which lets him bring back his big koala from his GY. And then he activates polymerization to fuse his big koala with the monster card that Cyrus gave him, Desmond Kangaroo. Once again, Des to his friends. And then he uses those two cards to fusion summon Master of Oz, which is like a giant green buff koala with weird arm pit hair. Looks for all the world like one of those shitty annoying gremlins from Gremlins 2. The ones they wanted to make toys out of real badly. Not that I'd ever compare Yu-Gi-Oh to a franchise that was obviously targeting kids for merchandising. And Chumley's dad sees this and then flashes back to when he was listening in on Jaden and Cyrus helping out Chumley in their dorm. And we see that he overheard Jaden giving him the Master of Oz fusion card. Wait, no, what? So Jaden and Cyrus both in individually have cards that would be appropriate for Chumley's deck for some reason. Not only that, they have cards that would only be usable if you had all three of those cards. Which they don't. Why do they have those cards? Just so they could give them to Chumley? 
Come on, GX. That's some of the most forced writing I've ever seen in a Yu-Gi-Oh show. I've got so many issues with what's going on in this scene. Because number one, Chumley's dad is just eavesdropping on his son that he's about to duel to dictate his future. And he's listening to all the cards that he's going to put in his deck. That seems a bit untoward. Essentially cheating against your son. But also the whole thing with Jaden and Cyrus having those cards that they really shouldn't have. And I get it. The symbolism is that all three of them individually have something that is stronger when they are united. But that symbolism just doesn't really work when the cards individually are just sort of useless. Huge problems with your symbolism, Yu-Gi-Oh GX. Just shoddy symbolism work there. In the flashback, Chumley is stunned that Jaden would give him such a powerful card. Well, it's not like Jaden's gonna f***ing use it. He can't. And then we see that Chumley's dad literally walked up to the dorm room door and cracked it open so he could peer in and check this out. Even though he could hear them just fine from outside, a floor down. This also calls into question Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley's peripheral vision. Because if they can't see the massive hulking brute lurking just outside their open doorway, they must be very nearsighted from all the card reading they've been doing. Master of Oz destroys Dizzy Angel, dropping Chumley's dad down to 700 life points. And Cyrus says, oh man, this one's going right down to the wire. Speaking of the wire, shows that you could be watching instead of this one. Chumley's dad says Chumley has fought well, but it's time for him to lose. And Chumley says, what are you talking about? Master of Oz has 4,200 attack points. Which obviously is a ridiculous thing to point out, because at this point, after several hundred episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh, you'd think the viewer would know that attack points aren't really everything. And the Chumley would know that, but nah. Having said that, I would really like to start using that as a counterpoint in every argument. Having a deep discussion about societal taboos, and I just break out, what are you talking about? Master of Oz has 4,200 attack points. Arguing the merits of The Last Jedi as a film, and I just break out, what are you talking about? Master of Oz has 4,200 attack points. Just a great counterpoint in any debate, really. Chumley's dad threatens to use flipping the table again, but Chumley says, that he knows that card's weakness. And Jaden says, flipping the table has a weakness? Yeah, you're gonna have a damaged table after you're done with it. Huge inconvenience. Turns out once you use flipping the table, you can't summon a monster afterwards, which will leave Chumley's dad defenseless. Which impresses Chumley's dad, who gives Chumley kudos for knowing how cards work. One of the most basic things they'd expect you to know at a school about card games. Chumley's dad plays two hot sauce bottles. Two hot sauce bottles. Once again, going to have that card in my deck. One day. It's gonna happen. And then Chumley's dad flips the table, destroying both hot sauce bottles and lowering Chumley's life points to zero. So, so much for that weak point, I guess. Chumley covers his nose as the stench of the alco- hot sauce reaches his nostrils, and he drops to his knees in defeat. Hang on, so two of the protagonist characters in this show have lost in a row. This is crazy! I can't get over it. I'm really surprised that this show is actually going along with the idea that the good guys can lose occasionally without it ruining their lives. I'm liking that actually quite a bit. Later on in the Slifer Red Dawn, Chumley is again packing to leave and Jaden and Cyrus approach him and say their emotional goodbyes, which includes Jaden telling Chumley that he's a good duelist. And then Jaden adds secretly in his head that he's much better than Chumley and Chumley sucks really. They all share some tears and Chumley says that it's time for him to go as there's lots of hot sauce that needs bottles. And Jaden says that he's sure that Chumley will be great at bottling it. Note that Jaden said that Chumley was a good duelist, but that he will be great at bottling hot sauce. Jaden there just sort of passively putting Chumley down while also encouraging him. I see your game, Jaden. We then see the three friends walking away from the Slifer Red Dorm, escorting Chumley off the island. And Professor Banner is waiting for them in the middle of the path, with Pharaoh the cat held tightly in his arms. Meow! I too am sad that Chumley will be leaving. His round, curvaceous body made for a fantastic cat bed. I have slept on Chumley many a time. He's a tremendous piece of furniture. Brah. Professor Banner gives Chumley a letter from his dad, who apparently had to leave to go deal with some sort of hot sauce related crisis. Presumably somebody realized that they'd been selling bottles of sake as hot sauce the entire time. And their company's stock has since risen somehow by hundreds of points. Because people just love dousing their burgers in sake now. It has changed hot sauce culture the world over. Chumley reads the letter aloud as we see Chumley's dad 
dad departing the island again on a shitty little rowboat. I guess hot sauce isn't doing that well if you couldn't afford an actual fucking boat. Chumley's dad's letter essentially says that you may not be getting great grades, but you are making great friends. And if you read between the lines, he's saying that Chumley isn't ready for the cutthroat business of hot sauce bottling. They would break him in a week. Chumley cries and rushes to the edge of a cliff and shouts out into the ocean, Dad, I'm not gonna let you down. Too late for that. And he says, from here on out, I'm gonna make you proud of me, my family and my friends. Once again, too late. Cyrus and Jaden stand next to Chumley, seemingly supportively, but in actuality they're just standing there so they can get a last glimpse of the rower, because he's their hero. Obviously. They just secretly really wanted an autograph out of the rower from this whole experience, and they didn't get it. Kind of a letdown. And that's the end of the episode! Thoroughly entertained by this one. This was a really, really nice little fun episode. And while it was a Chumley-oriented episode, and I know I've been kind of negative to him a lot with a lot of these jokes, you know, he's not that unappealing of a character. Considering a lot of the tropes that go hand in hand with his character, they kind of avoided a lot of them with this episode. I like that Jaden and Cyrus were, were genuinely, earnestly trying to help their friend as best they could. They saw that he was unhappy and they were doing everything they could to make him happy, regardless of what he wanted to do. Having said that, I think the episode could have gone into a lot more detail about the ins and outs of the hot sauce industry. Where does hot sauce compare to, say, trading cards in this world? World. Is one of them more of a hot commodity than the other? I'd really love to hear more about Chumley's dad and who he had to betray to become the hot sauce mogul that he is. He's definitely lost a lot of loved ones along the way. Had to stab them in the back and leave them in a ditch somewhere just to satisfy his hot sauce empire and keep it afloat. I want more hot sauce information. If this show doesn't delve more into the nature of the hot sauce industry, I'll be very disappointed. So yeah, what did you think of the episode? Let me know in the comments and also please let me know in the comments if hot sauce bottle is a real card. I don't want to do the research on my own at all. I just want you guys to do all the hard work for me. Let me know about that hot sauce ball card. And before we go ahead and wrap things up, I want to give a huge shout out to all of our Patreon pledges. You guys, your names are going along the bottom of the screen right now, doing a sexy little text dance down there. You guys are the best. You guys make this possible. You guys made me able to steal a lapel mic from the uh, the lecture cabinet over at Duel Academy. Wouldn't have been able to do that without your support. So thank you for that once again. I'm really excited because the next episode is gonna be the tag duel that they've been building up to this entire time. I'm really excited to see how how that goes. They didn't have too many tag duels in the Duel Monsters anime, and when they did happen, it was a huge deal. So I'm really excited that GX is throwing one at us right out of the gate, practically. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys seeing my reactions to it next week, fingers crossed. I only say fingers crossed because I'm going to be taking a break from Duel Academy to go to WrestleMania in the flesh in New Orleans. So I'm hoping that doesn't interfere with any of my Yu-Gi-Oh! GX perusing. I like perusing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Until next time, I'm going to go to the local bar and order a pint of hot sauce. Because, you know, when in Rome, drink a pint of hot sauce. That's the phrase. Catch you later. If you join it with one of your koalas, you'll have yourself a deck from down under. <laughs>